What do you get when you put together a Hallmark level performance, a load of former UK soap stars looking to branch out, and a story from a book that's actually considered quite good? You get this latest inclusion on Netflix titled Fool Me Once. Focusing on Maya Stern after her sister and husband were killed, we followed the police and her looking to get to the bottom of who was behind the murders. With many twists and an ending that was a bit ridiculous and unnecessary, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this show. So let's get into it. Here is Fool Me Once ending explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The Ending so as we embarked onto the ending of the penultimate episode, we found out that throughout the entirety of the show, we'd been lured down the pathway of being led to think that the killer was everybody else other than the actual murderer. We were led to believe that the person who killed Joe was also the same individual that killed her sister Claire, but that wasn't the case. It was just the fact that it was done with the exact same weapon, but by two different people. Maya killed her husband because he was the person that killed her sister Claire. He took the weapon that was in their possession and broke into her house and executed her in a brutal fashion. This was because she was working for Joe's family, the Burkitt's pharmaceutical company, and she'd made a deal with Cory the Whistler to not get the audio leaked from Maya's act that she committed by killing the innocent civilians when at war. But in return, she was going to get information on the Burkitt's company, Lambo Pharma, and the fact that they were falsifying test results in order to get their drugs to market quicker. And whilst being on the market, they were the reason as to why many people's lives were getting destroyed. And Detective Sammy Kears was one of those people whose life was being destroyed due to the side effects. We were led to believe that it could have been Phil the football coach, Shane at one point due to him putting a tracker onto Maya's car and us thinking that he could have been obsessed with her. Eddie due to being a husband that was drifting apart, but in actual fact, it turned out to be the two people that were right under our noses. We should have realized when Maya said that being Claire's sister trumped the weight of a marriage that she would have got the revenge that she was seeking, as she valued being her sister more than being married to her own husband, hence why it was quite easy for her to kill him. When it came to the other deaths in the show, such as the one that we saw in the beginning in the 1990s of Theo, the death of Joe's brother Andrew, and also Tommy Dark, Joe was actually responsible for all of those as well. He killed his brother Andrew because he felt like he was going to spill their involvement in Theo's death, and he also killed Tommy Dark due to him being the captain that was on the yacht on the night that Andrew was killed. Hence the payments that Dark had been receiving for 20 years too, in order to keep his mouth shut about what he saw. Also, if you missed it, the detective was never actually receiving payments from the family. That was forged just to raise suspicion. When it came to the closing moments of the season, we saw that Maya went to the Burkitt's house and admitted to them about killing their son because she knew that he killed her sister. And whilst doing so, she got them to admit the fact that they were falsifying their drug trials to get it to market quicker. Once all of that information was revealed, Judith's son held a gun towards Maya and killed her on the spot where she stood. However, it was being filmed on the nanny cam that was hooked up to a live feed which Corey the Whistleblower was streaming on his site around the world, and it was being watched by millions. So it meant that the company would most likely go under, the family would lose everything and they would go to jail too. Meaning that Maya got what she wanted, all whilst not needing to go to prison. She planned on being killed. Maya felt guilty for killing those civilians at war and she'd accepted her fate, hence why she left the weapon on the side, because she knew that it would most likely be turned on her. She knew that by being inside the same four walls in prison, she wouldn't be able to live with herself. Continuing to have those nightmares and reliving the decision that she wished that she just never made, so instead she'd rather lose her life, but in the process be able to get the ultimate revenge on the person that she despised most, her husband, and the family that he was a part of, meaning that they were all going to be going down and there was no way that they'd be able to deny it because it was caught on video. I see this as the true ending, as after this it cut to 18 years later, which is something that I just didn't really feel was necessary, but we saw that Lily was older and she named her daughter Maya after her mother. But most importantly, Sammy Kears was still alive, and the illness that he thought that he had wasn't actually present, and it was all just the Burkitt's tablets, so there was no long-term damage that was done there. Overall review To be honest, I thought this show was pretty weak and lame. It's not the best show to start the year off with, which is a shame. It felt like a book that hadn't really been adapted well for TV, in the sense that it felt like the story was being told to us like a novel would be. 
Rather than changing the delivery so it felt like a TV mystery when it was being shown to us, there was almost too much going on at points and what I describe as page turners rather than next episode watchers. There's something about these Harlan Coben shows that get made that just feel like they create them with the least amount of thought behind it in terms of the way that they get delivered. It doesn't truly feel like a Netflix great despite the fact that there's been so many of them. Michelle Keegan and Adil Actor were definitely the best things about this show. Their performances were really solid when compared to the rest of them and they were the main takeaways. Like I said at the start, the show just felt a bit hallmark in terms of its style and execution. It didn't feel like a dark, mysterious murder mystery that we'd often see on the platform, which is something that I thought was a shame. Even the reveal of who the murderer was at the end, it was a massive moment that the entire show had been building towards, but it just didn't really land with the weight that I feel it wanted to or needed to land with to really stick the ending to us. In terms of the runtime, I feel it could have probably done with being around six episodes instead of eight, especially considering that it's a limited series. There were elements which I felt could have been cut completely too, like Claire's son from a previous relationship. It didn't actually do anything for the development of the story, other than make us think that there was something else that was going on with the suspects, when in reality, it was all just a bit pointless. I must also say as well that I thought Louis' acting in particular was something that I wasn't really a fan of. The timid nature of the character just felt a bit unrealistic and unnatural. I'd say that it felt like this show never really pointed fingers at anybody, which is something that I think a show trying to nail this kind of genre really needs to do. We didn't really have a clue who committed the murders for the most part of the show. Not because there were so many suspects and we were all confused, but it was because the show didn't actually do a good job at giving us any clues or strange situations that might make us think that it's somebody else. So it did get a bit stale and I could only describe it as a bit boring when watching it. You want this type of show to be thought-provoking. Would I recommend For Me Once? Personally, I wouldn't. I don't think you're missing out if you choose not to watch this one. It's got soap star level actors in, which is something which isn't an insult, but it shows their level. And it has a story that just fails to keep the audience engaged. And when it does reveal the twist, it fails to do so in a way that makes it memorable or provide a sense of reward for sticking with it the whole time, which in itself felt like a while. But even with all of that, I don't think this show will impact the fact that a Harlan Coben story will probably get another show that will be hitting the platform sometime soon. Until the next one, I suppose. So, there you have it. For Me Once, Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the card in the top corner. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this show? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.